I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Uh, before we start this week's episode, yeah. I do want to make note of the fact that there is going to be announcement at the end of the episode. Uh, it's going to be in relation. Good. Yes, it's going to be in relation to the programming of Cryptopedia. So, if that's something that's interesting to you, be sure to stay towards the end. Yep, we are officially switching over to C plus plus. Oh God, don't please! I just got away from C plus <laughs> plus. As everyone should. Uh, well, no, that's not true, but I, this is not a programming podcast, Brandon. No. And I don't want to talk about programming outside of the confines of Monday to Friday. Okay. I mean, sure. Why not? <laughs> it's forced upon me because I sit next to a software guy at work, but whatever. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. What? I am a software guy. That's the problem. Yeah. I live <laughs> I live that hell. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, so I made a, I'm not going to say discovery cause I thought this before, okay. but I realized something today. What'd you because realize? I was, uh, the Transformers movies yeah. have aged worse than I could have ever imagined. How is that possible? Wait, which ones? The like Michael Bay ones? Yeah, all the Michael Bay yeah. ones. Okay. Although that being said, okay, so one and two, I used to have, like think were at least okay. Okay. Um, three, four, and five, I've thought were hot garbage since they first came out. Right. Yeah. They, they've they've disappointed me from out the gate. Oh yeah, and you've been clear on that. I've been extremely clear on that. I called Dark of the Moon my Vietnam for a while. Yeah, you did. You yeah. did. Yeah. So, uh so. Basically, there's been a line of new Transformers that have been coming oh, out. Oh, good. I like. Well. I like because you don't. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they're uh, movie inspired. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, they're like, they're called studio series. So they're basically uh, based on screen accurate molds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Are they based off the movies or are they based off of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like I have right here I have drift from the terrible fourth movie. Yeah. Um or actually no, this is the fifth movie cuz it's the last night. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I I was watching I was trying to watch 1 and 2. Yeah. Because I had fond memories of those two movies. Okay, I see how we're talking in the past tense now. So the first movie starts out it's just pure military porn. Yeah. There's no there's no value in it. All of the Spike, see all the Sam Witwicky scenes are terrible. Anything yeah. that has Megan Fox in it is just eye candy. Oh yeah, right? okay, that's fair. Um, bad movie, bad writing, bad fights. All right. Then I watched the second. Then I was like skipping through the second movie. Okay. The fights are way worse than I remember, and every character is like a caricature. Oh man, which is particularly bad. For skids and mudflap, who are basically a minstrel, a walking minstrel show. Oh no! Which I knew at the time, but like I think a part of my brain was like compartmentalizing that away, yeah, and not realizing how bad it was because it was Transformers. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was watching one scene, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, "Holy shit! How did this ever make it past anyone?" Yeah, and then I remembered Revenge of the Fallen came out during the Writers Guild. Oh, the uh, strike. strike. Yeah. Yeah. So the script was basically written by Michael Bay. Oh, geez. So oh, that explains a lot. Yeah. But it's so frustrating to me because, like, some of the designs from Revenge of the Fall in the second movie yeah. are legitimately cool. But they have a terrible movie backing them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of... In uh, uh, I was making a joke, but I forgot where I was going. That's fair. I mean, I'm just, I'm just dealing, struggling with the fact that now I know 
something that I've kind of been lying to myself about for 10 years now. Oh, yeah. 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 It's it's rough. It's it's rough when you when you come to terms with the fact that something that you've not necessarily loved, but you've had a a it's so bad it's good heart place in your heart for. Yeah. Kind of. And I just can't even have that anymore, which is depressing. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. I mean, that being said, there is a legitimately good Transformers movie now in the form of Bumblebee. So, at least there's that, I guess. I guess, yeah. I <sighs> did. I don't remember if I texted you this or not, but I did finally see Detective Pikachu, and it was outstanding. Yeah? I, yeah. I love it. It was very good. I loved the Mr. Mime scene, and I'm very happy you didn't tell me about it beforehand. I didn't tell you about anything because that movie is just a gem. It It's good. It's, it's a gem. Good. There's there's no, like, that entire movie is phenomenal. Like, it's good. I saw The Uncoming, but that doesn't even no, matter. You, yeah, I saw The Uncoming, too. I think, I think, I don't think that's the point of the movie. No. Though. The point Although, of the movie is they made it specifically for us. Exactly yes, people oh, our age. It is, it is de- definitively made for you and I and people like us. Yes. There is no doubt about it. If you saw the po- Pokemon the movie in theaters, uh-huh. it was almost definitely made for you. Yeah, if you got that ancient Mew trading card. I got a lot of that ancient oh, yeah. Mew trading card. <laughs> I actually literally have one right here. I don't know why I'm even bothering grabbing this. You know I have a stack of these. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who you're showing it to. Nobody else can see what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, I know. I put a lot of effort into that, but yeah. podcasting isn't a visual medium, despite me always insisting that it's a visual medium. Yeah. But, yeah, I got I got an ancient mute card right here, because nice. I have, like, 30 of them. Mm-hmm. Um, But I did, I do remember, like, I was handing them out at one point. Oh, God. I have so many. I have, like, 30 of them still. That's too many. <sighs> There's another yeah. kit. In the same spot. In the same spot. It's the one that doesn't break as much stuff, though. So we'll see how this one goes. I'll keep an eye. Okay. <laughs> I'm keeping gone. my eye. Oh, she's gone. Yeah. But yeah, so... No, that that was actually legitimately good, though. Dope. The, um... I, I, I don't even remember where I was going. Uh, you know but... what place is uh, legitimately good? This is... Broke it, like, tangentially connected, because he said the word was good. Went to, uh... Bowery Dugout for the first time yesterday. Bowery Dugout? Yeah, which Where's is that? Uh, like a couple blocks from my house, but mm-hmm. I had just never gone there. And um, I went there because it like they have no, nobody has like snow crab legs anywhere, but for some reason it's just on their menu all the time. So we went over, just walked over. Um, all right. Like you can like one entree could be like sixty dollars or something. So we just did shots of tequila beforehand because like I'm not paying for their drinks. Um, yeah, so we went over, and they're actually good. They got a uh, uh, some no- nice duck, roasted duck, and raspberry sauce, and all that. And like, we fully knew what we were getting to beforehand. And also, I had to break in, got into some new shoes because we're going to see Chris Brown. Got new shoes. We're like, let's mm-hmm. break in these shoes beforehand. You don't want to be standing for so long with some not broke in shoes. The table mm-hmm. behind us was mm-hmm. unaware of the place, <laughs> so I heard. Oh, I know what this place is. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I just heard, like, some mutter under their breath, like, it's $120 a piece for four people. And I was like, you guys did not know what you were getting into when you showed up. Yeah, I've actually been there, like, once, and it was when, it was, like, for a party. Yeah. For, like, somebody. Oh, yeah, it's the one that's got the tap dancing lobster. The what? I did not see any tap dancing lobster. It's a it's a lobster with a top hat. Oh, on, like, the outside? Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the show notes. You do. Because... It was dark. I like. I just knew where they were. <laughs> um. Actually, wait. Let me. Let me make sure I don't get the website. <laughs> 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 All right. Here's the. Yeah, it was actually good. Uh, they they seemed understaffed, hand. so it took a while for food to come out. So we were there for like three hours. I do I do remember them being understaffed the time I went. Yeah, but that's not the staff's fault. So it's not like it wasn't we were, well, I wasn't mad like I didn't feel like they were ignoring me or anything well, like that. You don't get mad at the staff when they're understaffed. It's not fair yeah. to them. I mean, 
some people will, but it's not. It's not yeah. It's impolite. It's it impolite. Is. That's the worst part yeah. of it. Oh, did I tell you that one time uh, when, when I was in in uh, Cal- uh, Canada? Yeah. The the guy I talked to some random dude who was like at a, a sunglasses stand because okay. he was buying sunglasses, and he was like, "Yeah, it's just it's just not polite." Like in reference to racism. Oh, I mean, it's not he's not wrong. <laughs> I would never say that was an untrue statement. No, but it's just like, it was the most Canadian way of putting it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, (laughs) exactly, that's exactly it. And it just, it struck me so hard because I'm just like, you're right, but man, that's so Canadian. Yeah, there was a Canadian standoff at work the other day. Oh, God. That's when uh, someone is holding a door open and everybody's trying to go either in or out. So it's just four mm-hmm. people standing around going, no, you go first. You go first. You go first. Yep. Uh, yeah. that's, that, that, that always happens at uh, at work, though, because it's like, oh, well, I work with you and I don't want you mad at me. Oh, they can, I have no problem if people are, work at, are mad at me. I'm just a nice person. People can't be mad. They, that's their problem. God damn I kick it. ass. Uh, jeez. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, since this is our year anniversary episode. It's our episode one year anniversary. Well, technically actually last week was. It's our. I realize that. One but, year plus a little bit of like. Yeah. Movie magic. One year anniversary. Yeah. Well, because I, I wanted to make episode 52 the anniversary episode just because, you know. We had to. Yeah. That's how it works. It's it's episode 52. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I uh I thought I'd do something a little special. This is a listener request, although it was on our list as well, but a listener did request this episode. Um we're not going to do the usual guessing game though because Brandon and I uh actually discussed this beforehand. We planned it out. <laughs> it was a trick. It was a it. trap. We were yeah, sneaky actually- sneaks. It's the first episode I think we planned out. Yes. In 52 True. episodes. We've never planned before horrifying. ever. No, not really. Uh, so this week we're going to th- I'm going to thank uh Clay Sinclair because he's the one who suggested this. Uh, Clay. We're going to do Mothman. Woo! Mothman. Mothman. Um so before we begin, Brandon, will you uh Want to click on that link in the the episode copy? Yes. Yeah. Let's let's give that a click. It's uh. Okay. That's. It's just... I mean, it's a good thing I'm not going to sleep for a long time now because I don't want that to show up in my nightmares for a while. Yeah, I I um. So I was looking for, like, uh, there was like a website I was looking for a book I was looking for on archive.org. Yeah. So I look. I searched for Mothman, and that was the first hit. Oh God, and it's it's a fever nightmare dream, and I'm, yeah. I'm I don't know how to describe it other than like a weird aboriginally ab- aborigines like statue, yeah, with a lo- like a I don't even know what kind of moths wings those are. I couldn't That's tell sh- you. It's just like demon. kind of demon. Yeah, moth. it's it's dancing with like a weird flute music. Yeah, and it's just it's weird. It's really weird. Um, weird is the understatement. Yeah, it has literally nothing to do with the Mothman, though. So, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. It's both moth-ish and man-like. Yeah, I mean, it's got moth wings. Yeah. And it do- it is a portent of death. For sure. <laughs> At the very least, death of sanity. Yes. Um, so... The Mothman story itself begins in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, 1966. So Point Pleasant is the county seat of Mason County because that's a wor- that just rolls off the tongue. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a city of about 4,000 people, um, 6,000 in the 60s, so there's been a little bit of a, a migration out of the city. Uh, and it's in the Ohio River Valley, actually right on the border between Ohio and... Point Pleasant. Like, a lot of the times when you're reading stuff about it, uh, you'll see stuff about, like, Gallipoli, which is a nearby city. And actually, it's the city that 
the silver bridge used to connect oh to, okay on point pleasant um they're really it's a really mundane city not a whole heck of a lot's happened there although there are two noteworthy exceptions one, the Battle of Point Pleasant, which was 1744, mm -hmm. in which bad things happened to Aboriginal people living in the Ohio River Valley, which is pretty much every every conflict with Native Americans in the United States. Yeah, we show up and just not good things happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and two, the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, which claimed the lives of 46 rush hour Christmas shoppers and civilians one December morning. Um, which we'll talk about probably a little bit more in a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, naturally, we'll be covering the latter of the two of these incidents because this is a John episode and later events are more likely to be covered. <laughs> uh, also, in case you haven't guessed this or in, ha in case you haven't heard of it, the Silver Bridge collapse has been associated with the bizarrely popular cryptid, the Mothman. And when I say bizarrely popular, I mean it. And you're about to find out why. There's like no good reason for the Mothman to be as popular no, and like there prolific in American like culture at all. Yeah. Like it's bizarre that this creature is so popular. Mm. Like I can at least get Bigfoot. I can understand the Jersey Devil, but Mothman makes no sense to me. The Dover Demon almost makes more sense to me. Mm. But we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. So November 15th, 1966. Uh, is when the first sighting occurred. Well, the first reported sighting. There's a little more to that, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, our story begins in the TNT area of Point Pleasant, formerly known as the West Virginia Ordnance Works and currently known as the McClintic Wildlife Management Area. The region was used in manufacturing ordnance clandestinely in World War II. So basically the way that it worked was there was like a generator building and then there were a bunch of igloos, right? Yeah. And when I say igloo, I mean like a concrete bunker of sorts that was like like hemisphere, like a hemisphere in which they covered the roof of it with dirt and grass. Yeah. So spy planes when they were flying above it couldn't sight the ordnance depots. Oh. Okay. And instead it just looked like it just looked like forests with yeah. like a generator building nearby, right? Mm -hmm. So when when Hypothetically, if someone was flying over it, they'd be like, I have that. That's not that's just a wildlife area. So it was like a weird form of uh, anti intelligence to, yeah. to do that. Now, that being said, it's since been abandoned and pervert and perverted, converted <laughs> to a wildlife preservation area, as I mentioned before. The region is currently classified as a super fun site. As a super fun site? Yeah. So yeah. do you know what a super fun site is? No. Should I? So. You actually, you oh, super fun, super fun, super fun, super fun. Yeah. I thought you were saying fun. it's super fun. No, like bouncy no, no, no. balls, it, it's, paintball, it's, basketball. It's, filled yeah, with balls. it's the uh, it's the opposite of a super fun site. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's super fun. F U yeah. N D. Yeah. So basically, what happened was in the seventies, people realized, oh shit. Pollution's bad. Yeah. Because for some reason, people didn't realize until the 70s. So, um, effectively, what ended up happening was, in the, 19, in, in the 1980s, there was like a... I'm looking at the Superfund site on the EPA right now. Yeah. It was called the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, mm -hmm. in which, basically, now they had to be... Things had to be cleaned up, right? Yeah. And... In the Ohio River Valley, the uh, the area around the TNT area, like the water turned like red or something like that. Oh, fun! Generally, generally not a good thing to happen. Fun, es yeah. Especially when you're dealing with like saltpeter mm. and all the other fun things that go into gunpowder manufacturing. Oh yeah. Um. Not only that, but the TNT area <laughs> is one of the top ten most polluted sites in the U.S. Oh, even better. Yeah, it's pretty bad, which when you consider some of the terrible places that are on the U.S., yeah. to make it in the top ten is bad. Oh, geez. And before you go there, to most people, um, keep in mind, it still hasn't been cleaned. 
Oh yeah, uh, they, they they're just yeah. it's a just don't go here type of deal. Yeah, well, there is money to clean it. It's just it hasn't happened yet because it's a public works project project, and if someone doesn't care, it doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Um, additionally, it's like four thousand people, so it's not in a super duper high density area. Um, the region is actually pretty mm-hmm. sparsely populated, so impetus is low. Now, suffice to say. The region was fairly remote, especially in the 60s. On November 15th, 1966, two married couples, the Scarberries and the Mallets, were driving through the remote TNT area at 11.30 p.m. Okay. Now, I remember reading somewhere, and I couldn't find the source because I've been reading a lot for this episode, which Mm -hmm. actually let me call that out. Uh Unfortunately, the primary source for this episode is the Mothman Prophecies by John A. Keel. Oh, good. Um, yeah. More on that in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, I also read sub- several articles by Joe Nickel, um, some Vice articles, just a smattering of stuff. So somewhere in one of those articles I read, and I have links to all the articles I read and all the books I read, mm-hmm. uh, I remember reading somewhere that it was like, a weird joyride that they were doing through the oh, woods. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's weird. I, I don't really understand what was going on. Um, but for whatever reason, they're in the TNT area, right? It's late, almost midnight, whatever. So as the group approached the old generator plant, Linda Scarberry noticed two bright red circles in the distance in the darkness of the building. Reportedly by keel, these circles were about two inches in diameter and six inches apart, right? Like red glowing eyes. Like red glowing eyes. Well, yes. Um, I should note that in one of the Joe Nickel articles, it makes note of the fact that uh, Linda Scarberry or... Was it Linda Scarberry or was it... One of the other articles, basically until the high beams hit it, Mm -hmm. it wasn't noticeable, effectively. Oh, okay. I I don't know. Like I shine then. Yeah, I don't know if it was this this instance or another instance cuz once again, there's so many so many instances of this story are literally beat for beat the same thing. I got you. So, I don't know which one it was because mm-hmm. my memory is is shoddy because I had to read the Mothman prophecies and that has a bad that has a deleterious effect on the human mind. I believe it. Um so, while questioning the lights, they began to approach the car apparently attached to some huge animal. So, in, in quoting Roger Scarberry, it was shaped like a man, but bigger, maybe six and a half or seven feet tall, and had big ween- wings folded against its back. So, I want to stop for a second. How is everyone who sees anything so good at guessing heights? Yeah. Right? Like It's very difficult to do that. I, they're just so good. I mean, when you when you're in a a Seven Eleven, they have the height gauge thing there, right, to catch if someone when someone's leaving, mm-hmm. what their height was. So in the case of like a robbery or something, it's like yeah, they were they were red they were red image whatever, yeah, right, because because it's easier to re- remember a primary color over a number, and you know if there's a camera, it can also monitor and get a height grab or whatever. So I, I just. These are this is a high stress situation. I just question how well they know that. And for that matter, two inches in diameter and six inches apart means nothing. No, if anything, just take that as like the ratio, not the actual value. Yeah, yeah, because because like if it's a football field away, I, I'm not going to be able to tell you if something's two inches wide. Correct. Yeah. Like, <laughs> anywho, so. The creature, gray and walking on man-like legs, which I guess the alternative would be like goat-like legs. I, I don't yeah. bird-like. If it's humanoid, I'm gonna assume it's man-like. I, I guess it's a whatever. Uh, <laughs> approached the open door, spurring the group to take off in the car to nearby Route 62. According to the account recorded by John Keel, the group claimed to have been driving at nearly 100 miles per hour. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Reckless. Yeah. Super reckless. Um, when the gray form overtook them on unflapping bat-like wings, squeaking like a mouse. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, 
So this thing is like basically Rodan in the old. Uh, yes. It's basically Rodan in the old uh, Godzilla movies. Yes. Because Rodan didn't flap its wings a whole heck of a lot because it was no. a guy in a suit. Yeah. He didn't need to. So, yeah, he didn't need to. My and vision was... is pretty bad. Yesterday, I was at a petting zoo, and yeah. there was a, a plane, and I went, oh, look at that. And then it, it the plane flapped its wings. And then yeah. I realized, oh, maybe my eyes aren't that great. Well, maybe your eyes are human eyes because humans are not great at identifying things in the air. True. That that's that's like a super thing. Mm-hmm. I I forget which 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 of the millions of uh Discovery Channel or History Channel shows it was on, but there's been like multiple cases of people being like, "Listen, you're not as good at guessing distances and heights as you think you are." Oh yeah. That that's literally the entirety of it. It's like, "Listen, I get that you you think you know what the size of something is, but you don't. But un- unless you have a frame of reference, you literally have no idea. Yeah. So, the creature, while following them at nearly a hundred miles an hour, apparently, which super fast for a bird. Once again, like going back to what was it two weeks episodes ago? What's with, uh, the Spring airspeed Hill Jack? of a peregrine falcon? Two hundred and seventy-two, I think. Okay. Um, I only know that because of Spring Heel Jack Part 2. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'll tell you in three seconds because I just opened up Spring Heel Jack. Um, I mean, Google works too. but they, 270 it's... miles per hour. Hey, that was a pretty pretty Wait. close guess. Uh, 242. Sorry, Ooh, I went over. Okay. I was off by one digit. So, 242. So, you're already, you're already halfway, a yeah. little less than halfway to the fastest animal on the planet. And you're a seven foot tall monster. Yeah, that that's and that's got to be a lot of weight to carry too, like a yes. lot. Yes, yeah, because it's also described as being very broad in a lot of cases. Yeah, like, like I wouldn't be surprised if it was me taller is what it looked like. Yeah, based on descriptions. So, uh, the group then followed the, the wow. The creature then followed the group to the city limits. Uh, notably, they pass a large dead dog on the highway as they go. It's called out by John Keel in the story. Okay. Now, I know where he's going with this, and I'll I'll go there with him, but we'll get there. This this whole story is a bunch of we'll get there. A bunch of we'll a, get there. It's 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 like because okay, here's the problem with this story, and the problem with Mothman in general. It's a lot of leaps of logic. Oh, yeah. Like, at the very least, in the case of a Bigfoot story, like, remember the Battle of Eight Canyon? Yes. It's not really a leap of logic to say that something attacked the cabin. No, not at all. Right? In the case of the Black Dog of Bungay, it's not like, oh, we're not ma- we're not drawing any connections here. It was a dog that attacked this thing, and it might have been a demon. Who knows? Right? Mm-hmm. So, it's not like other stories this is like hey this thing happened oh by the way it's associated with all these other things yeah tenuously and i'll get into why the mothman is associated with all these other things when i talk about the mothman prophecies because that book has i have read a lot of books brandon yeah i've let i read books for this podcast it is the first book that i can unequivocally give a one star rating to. Mm. <laughs> so after after a like run it fleeing from this creature, uh, the group goes directly to the sheriff's office, yeah. who takes them fairly seriously because he's known them for their whole life because mm. this is a small town, right? Yeah. Um, investigating the area, there was no evidence of a dead dog, a creature, or anything that they've described, right? Reportedly. The deputy did get some static burst on his radio. Okay. Now, I only mention this because John Keel, Keel care, cares about this, and this is a part of his whole grand alien theory, right? Yeah. Because John Keel is super big into aliens uh, and being paranoid as fuck. I'm dropping the hard F on that one because that's, that's what he F. is. Yeah. The hard F. Um, at this point, in the story, when reporting on this the next day, the copy editor 
dubbed the creature by its famous moniker. Named for Batman, the Mothman. Literally named really? after the Batman. That's yes. fantastic. That is why the Mothman is called that. Um, I will say that John Keel says it was anonymous, although I read somewhere else that it was uh, the uh, lead of the, the messenger who dubbed the term. But okay. that's I don't actually know if that's the case. That's one of those weird things where it might have gotten lost in history. Mm-hmm. Um, so, now, you might be wondering, and I pointed this out pretty heavily, why did I mention a dog? Why did John Keel mention a dog in the sto- first story? Okay. So... This is maintained verbatim from the tidbit in the Mothman Prophecies telling events. Oh, okay. And the reason it's there is because Keel has made a connection between that night's event and the night before. So, this is this was unreported at the time of the uh, the first reported event, November fifteenth. Newell Partridge of Salem, West Virginia, was watching TV one night, um, and this night in particular, November 14th, the night before the couple saw this thing, whatever. Around 10.30 p.m., um, his TV suddenly blacks out, and it begins to, like, whine in, like, like a weird sound or whatever, and, yeah. like, a weird pattern appears on the screen and all that kind of stuff like you know snow snow appears on the screen snow Which, okay so you're talking snow you're not talking like the national emergency no, no okay no. so it's basically he lost signal gotcha right or at the very least some other signal was heavier or he was trying to watch porn but didn't have uh showtime no well yeah he didn't have the descrambler yeah he didn't have the descrambler but he thinks he saw a boop Every once in a while, you would actually see, like, a hazy boob. A, l- a hazy one. Not not anything... Nothing of anything. substance. Yeah. But there was something. I swear there's something there. There, it's hey, enough. There, it's, hey, listen. I spent a lot of time watching those snowy channels <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> Sometimes it's enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> In a lot the of time waiting rate. for JPEGs to load for very slowly. Didn't you destroy a computer once? Didn't I? Uh, I remember you distinctly telling me a story about a computer being completely hosed by certain events. Oh, yeah. No, I ruined a computer. It got fixed eventually. My mom got one of the IT guys, who I actually ended up working with it, uh, in the future, <laughs> um, to come by and fix my computer for, I think, like some beer and pizza. You know what the you know what the worst thing in the world is? What's that? When someone asks you to, uh, when a, someone asks you to fix their computer for you for the for them, yeah, and you find their porn accidentally. Oh yeah, and thumbnails are enabled. Oh, <laughs> like, and then you're just like, huh? No. I just learned a lot about you. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to know this. I yeah. don't want to know this, and I. It's been so many years, and I still can't erase the memory. It's, I mean, thank God for the internet, because, and that it's faster now. You don't need to keep folders anymore. There's no reason. No, there's not. Not really. So, getting back to the story, because that was a, that was a fucking... That was a tangent. (laughs) That was a tangent. Uh, I want to point out again. There is an explicit tag on this on iTunes. And I would like to point out again, my mom does listen. (laughs) Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. I didn't say anything she didn't already know. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. Um, So, his German Shepherd dog, which, let me say, I love German Shepherds. I'll never take care of a German Shepherd because they're high maintenance, but I love them. I'll That's why I'm a cat person. That's why I'm a cat person as well. But I will still give a dog some scritches. Oh, yes. That's why I love walking around my neighborhood. There are so mm-hmm. many dogs who you can just pet and give so many scritches to. Well, for me, for me, uh, dogs are like kids, right? If I know, sometimes I can stand being around them for a little while <laughs> yeah but i don't want to take care of them for me 
For me, dogs are like kids. It's frowned upon if you hit someone else's with a rolled up newspaper. It's true. <laughs> it's super true. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes you want to. <laughs> yeah. It's super frowned upon, though. It's, it's not a good... It's not a good look. No. Typically. <laughs> typically. You can get in a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. Uh, geez. It's taken us fucking 10 minutes to get through a paragraph. <laughs> so the German Shepherd Bandit is on the front porch howling, right? Okay. So Newell Partridge goes out. He shines his flashlight around, and uh, he sees a large pair of eyes about the size of bicycle reflectors some 150 yards away near his barn. Right? Yeah. Once the eyes are visible in the light, Bandit snarls and takes off after them. Right? Out into the darkness. Whatever. Partridge feels like this wave of fear. Right? And it keeps him from following the dog. So he then goes back in, loads a gun, and just sleeps sleeps with the gun loaded next to him. Right? Okay. So, waves so of freaked fear out, is my, which... uh, the name of my uh, metal band. What is? Waves of Fear. Waves of Fear. That's a pretty good name. It's a pretty good name. It's a pretty good name. Layers of Fear is the name of a video game. Ah. Uh, yeah. It's a good name. Yeah. It's, it's a good name. It's a, d- the most disgusting cake you've ever eaten, though. Uh, that's true. Of Fear, Blank of Fear is, I think, good for anything. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Ducks of Fear. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, farts of Fear. Farts of Fear is a good one. Yeah. Tears of Fear. Tears for Fear. That's a little different. Uh, let's see. Man, this this joke is going nowhere for me. Mm, no. <laughs> you know, you think after a year, I'd, I'd, I'd start to realize when a joke is going to land, but that just doesn't nah. happen. I mean, it did seem like it had potential. It had potential. There was yeah. something there. Mm-hmm. But just looking around my room, it's all Transformers, so Transform of Fear is just not great. No. It's or a you bad just one. naming things that you had around your room. Of lamp, fear. lamp, lamp of fear. Of fear. Uh, green screen of fear. Green screen of fear. Um, uh, sound sensor of fear. Of fear. Uh, fucking helmet of fear. That might be good. Oh, accordion of fear. Oh, <laughs> that's actually that's a good one. Accordion. That's of fear a good, is good one. Lube of fear. Not good. Not good. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want that. That's 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 not a great, not a great look. No. Um, so, with his gun of fear and waves yeah. of fear, maybe a little bit of Lou of fear. We're not sure. Oh. Not gonna, n- not gonna cast aspersions. Well, maybe. Um, the next morning, he awakens and starts to look for his dog because his dog never came back in the night. Okay. Uh, he finds the track like the trail ends with a circle, as though the dog had been chasing its own tail. Yeah. And was suddenly picked up into the sky. Hmm. Now, at this point, I think you can see the the tenuous line that Keel's trying to make between these two events. Yeah, I sort of see yeah. where he's trying to go. He's implying that basically Mothman picked up the dog or some other dog and dropped it off in the T- TNT area the next day. That being said, Salem is over 100 miles away from Point Pleasant. Yeah? Yeah. That's a pretty long distance for a predator to carry its prey. Yeah, I mean, unless he's got, like, his favorite spot or whatever, then, you know, even, maybe that's fine. Even then, you're going to have you're gonna have uh, dogs before then. Yeah, that's true. Right? Like, uh, whatever. So, additionally, um, I'm always suspicious about, by nature about sightings that occur first that are reported after the fact. So, so, Especially... So, 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 uh, I can't, if I could, wasn't stuttering right now, then... So, uh, <sighs> never mind. She sells seashells by the suspicion store? Yeah. The suspicious shore. So, 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 so. All right, I can't talk. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Tita, tutu, tati, tita, tati, tata, tata, tata. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Wow, that's that's difficult. Yeah. Crib death. She sells well, seashells by the seashore. I, I think I think my new she sells seashells by the seashore is she sells uh seashells by the suspicious seashore. 
This, this to is, a man in red leather. The suspicious seashore saw shiny shells from... I, know, I was trying to make one up on the spot. This is us ad-libbing. We're not good at it. No. There's a reason we have scripts. Yeah, there's a really good reason why we write like 10 pages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tried it for a while. We've talked about this on multiple episodes. I'm. We're not good at it. No. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, in fact, there are actually multiple reports that occur before the first reported sighting. Yeah. Uh, that they're almost all the same. I saw a humanoid and it glided. Uh, yeah. Right? Um, and I'm not going to bore you with them because they're extremely boring to read them all. Yeah. There's a Mothman wiki. If, you, if you're if you obsessed with Mothman, you can read all those things. Uh-huh. But to me, like, that kind of sighting is basically, you might have seen an owl, dude. Yeah, like v- very true. It's more likely that it's going to be an owl than anything else. Which, even in the other the the sightings I've mentioned, it's probably most likely an owl. But we'll get to that. That's I mean that's a lot of our content is could have been an owl. Yeah, it's it's just a, like that's the thing that has disappointed me most in the year of doing this. It's like Occam's razor is very much like. In effect, for oh, yeah. most of this stuff. Occam so, loves his owls. He does love his owls. Um, so jumping back forward a little bit to uh, November sixteenth, uh, basically Point Pleasant is a bit of a boring town, right? Uh, John Keel said at the time of the events, there were no bars, there was no like nightlife to speak of, so, um. Basically, Mothman is like the excitement that the people have been craving. Oh, yeah. It's that kind of town. It's one of those towns, right? It's yeah. like one one story starts up and it's like, oh, my God, we got to do this. This is our thing. Yeah. Right. And people flock to the TNT area in an attempt to catch a glimpse of the, of the creature. Now, like to the point that there's like shotguns being shot into the air and all sorts of hooting and hollering and, mm-hmm. you know, standard redneck shit. Oh, it's standard redneck sh- <laughs> Yeah. I just say that knowing, having known rednecks for most of my life, that's what they do. Oh, yeah. Um, So, interestingly, though, a carload containing no such monster hunters uh, notices a red light moving about the TNT area that night, mm-hmm. right? Um, And this car held Mr. and Mrs. Wamsley... Mrs. Marcella Bennett and her daughter, Tina, spelled T-E-N-A. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's one of those. Um, Who had been traveling to visit a friend who had lived in a bungalow in the area. Now, when they were heading back, uh, the group notices a large gray figure rise from behind their parked car. Okay. It seemed as if it had been lying down. It rose up from the ground, a big gray thing, bigger than a man with terrible glowing red eyes miss bennett uttered a little cry so horrified she dropped her the small baby in her arms the child began to cry more insulted than hurt but her mother couldn't move to pick her up again she dropped her child in fear oh no why would she do that i don't know i've never dropped anything in fear i mean i feel like you you hold them tighter in fear i think sometimes yeah all I can say is she doesn't really have the best motherly instinct. No, uh, I would agree with that. That's uh, <laughs> so. That's a pretty true fearf- statement. Yeah. Fearful, the group remembering to grab the baby. Well, that's good. As a group, they that's can the remember to news. get the baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think it was Marcella Bennett, though. I think it was one of the, the Wamsleys. So, yeah. whatever. Uh, rush back into the house, staying there until later in the night, phoning the police. Yeah. And not only that, but, like, nobody nearby knew anything about it happening. (laughs) So, like, all the people who are, like, monster hunting know nothing about this event, which is kind of hilarious until, like, the next day. Mm -hmm. So, this this all happened, like, sometime around 9 o'clock-ish. Okay. So, still, once again, all these sightings are pretty much... All the, the canonical sightings so far have been in the dark. Yeah. Right? Um... There's sightings of large winged creatures which continue unabated. And 
I do want to mention something that I didn't write down in the show notes. Okay. John Keel has has this like the way he writes is like very self aggrandizing in like like eighth grade. If uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what I'm do you know what I mean? Like I know that what you whole mean. like like everything is m- more big than ever and yeah. like nothing personnel kid type yeah. stuff. Um he he dubs Mothman the Garuda. The Garuda, okay. The Garuda, named for like the birds that carried the Indian gods around and yeah. like he draws parallels to like Thunderbird and all that stuff and Okay. He puts a lot of significance onto the Mothman, despite the fact that it's a person with wings. Yeah, that's Yeah. Yeah. He might be uh, that feels a little like reachy. He's he's definitely reaching with this yeah. story. Um on the 17th, sightings of UFOs and a huge bird occurred in two different parts of the town. Now, huge bird, once again, could just be a big bird. There are big birds. There are big birds. Ra- they're birds. Ravens. They don't look ravens. that big until they're not in yeah. the sky. Yeah. Ravens are, like, massive. All birds are way bigger than you think they are. Yes. That's a fact. Birds are scary. Yeah. Um... And then on the 18th, two firemen were in the TNT area when they encountered a large bird with large red eyes. One person even claimed that Mothman had stood in its, their front yard. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's most of the stories, right? Yeah. Like, they're all, they all follow that, like, general trend. Like, oh, I saw something flying that was big. Oh, I saw something big with red eyes. Oh, I saw something standing in my yard. Dogs were barking, right? Yeah. I love that song, but I know we said that before, so I'm going to not do it. Who let the dogs out? No. Dogs were barking by Gogo Verdello. Oh, God. When did we mention When did we mention that? I don't remember, but I know I put in a sound clip of it. You definitely did. I do remember that. Not like the full song, but you said something like, dogs were barking, and I cut in uh, uh, Eugene Hutz being like, dogs were barking. Yeah. <laughs> So, sightings of the Mothman would occur until sometime in December, largely following the pattern I've described. There was, however, one final standout case. Okay. It was reported to have happened in broad daylight. In broad daylight. Also, very short encounter. Yeah. Well, I think all of them have been fairly short. All of them are, like, minuscule encounters, with the exception of the first one, where it, like, chased them. Yeah. Yeah. So, at 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday, November 27th, 1966, Connie Carp- Carpenter was driving home from church mm-hmm. when she saw a large gray figure around seven feet tall with broad shoulders standing on a golf course. Now, this wasn't like, you know, the like, like uh, what's his name? Andre the Giant wearing a wingsuit. Yeah. No. This, this, was, this was something that had... Large glowing red eyes, which were said to be almost hypnotic to the point that she was like driving towards him and like almost didn't pull away from him. Yeah. Um, as she slowed to approach the creature, it spread its wings to a span of about 10 feet. Now, want to take a second? Want to take a second right there? 10 feet is nowhere near long enough of a wingspan for a seven foot tall monster. But that let's, is let's, absolutely let's, true. Let's not let's not devolve into the rope in 2.0 because that's what this could happen. This that's exactly what this could be. I hear you typing. Oh yeah. You, you it, doing math? No, I thought about doing math earlier. Yeah. It's um. I didn't. Well, I before, didn't bother. earlier because he said the the height of Mothman and we said talked about weight. So I was gonna figure because you can really easily figure out the mass yeah, of something oh, yeah. if you yeah. scale. So it's gonna do that, but no, I've uh, I was t- typing you that you should just talk for a second because I have to make sure my door's unlocked because uh, okay. coffee is being delivered. <laughs> sure enough. So, <laughs> God, how am I gonna riff? Like, like I'm so bad at riffing. I mean, all right, you know what? Let's talk about let's talk about wingspans. You know, because it just doesn't work that way. Ten feet is nowhere near enough. If you saw a bird with a wingspan that was the same as its height, like imagine a sparrow, right? Imagine a sparrow that had oh, a wingspan that was three inches because that's how tall the sparrow is. Imagine that. 
Just like think about that. Like how would it fly? It would be like the worst hummingbird ever. There's hummingbirds are great. Hummingbirds are great. They're just tiny. They're in zip. It goes yeah. zip, 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 zip. Their hearts fast. are basically constantly exploding, though. Yeah, so. that's true. It, it's like <laughs> a hellish existence. Yeah. So, so anywho, the uh, the Mothman spreads its wings out, right, and then takes off like a helicopter. Uh. Meaning it goes straight like up vertical takeoff. Yeah. Yeah, although it would be funny if the wings just suddenly did <laughs> <Yeah>. this, <laughs> where they, like, kind of... Yeah. And then just spun around. I think that would be a way better cryptid. That would be fantastic. To be totally honest. I would be so happy if that's what happened. That would be phenomenal. Yeah. So, and after, you know, doing the VTOL thing, it flies at her car. Scared, okay. she flees the area, accelerator ramming down to the, to you know, pedal to the metal, takes off. Yeah. Curiously, she develops a case of Klee conjunctivitis. Mm-hmm. Now, do you know, have you ever heard of Klee conjunctivitis? No, I have not. So, Klee conjunctivitis or a sin- asitinic conjunctivitis. I can't, that's a hard word to pronounce for John. Um, I'm going to throw a picture of it in the in the show notes. Oh, okay. Um, so, basically, it's pink eye. Right, yeah. it's like a form of pink eye, uh, except it's non. It's a non bacteria. It's a non bacterial form of pink eye. The eye gets irritated, um, and it's generally caused by like if someone's using an acetylene torch, right? Oh, Therapeutic lamps, yeah, anything yeah. with anything with ultraviolet rays. It's like yeah, lots basically, of UV, no eye protection. You're gonna get exactly. Bad. That's that's what Klieg radiation is. Now, Brandon. Yes. Color spectrum. Yes. Lowest lowest frequency is what? Are we talking visible color spectrum? Visible, or? visible, visible, visible. Visible red. Highest? Uh, I'm gonna say uh, violet. Yeah, that's why you get ultraviolet and infrared. Yeah. Right. So Brandon. Yes. I have a question for you. Okay. If the Mothman's eyes are glowing red. Oh, how uh, I see where you're going with that. <laughs> if they're if they were if it was on that portion of the spectrum, then why are they getting cle conjunctivitis? Yes, when that's you'd, caused you'd expect, by ultraviolet. Yeah, you'd expect to see purple. Yeah, more purple in it. it, it it's just because that's why black lights are purple. Yeah. So uh, this is this is a pet theory of of um John Keels where. Klee conjunctivitis is typically associated with UFOs, right? Yeah. So, because he's like, oh, there's some ultraviolet thing, yada, yada, yada. But if it's red, that doesn't make logical sense. Yeah. Now, I, I want to say I'm not a physicist. So, if someone out there has a good explanation for that, please explain to me. Because, I mean, I think that hypothetically there can be other parts of the, the spectrum there. But... I'm not saying you're not a physicist. I am saying that you took a physics class and thought you blew up your hand. I did think I blew up my hand. That is true. But I was also the only person who did any of the labs and everyone copied off of me. And that's how all of his physics class lost their hands. (laughs) It was scary, okay? I believe it. It was really, really terrifying. Me and my fucking... uh, my Naruto hoodie and Kakashi doing the electricity thing with his hand. Chidori, was it? Yeah, Chidori. <laughs> scary. It was scary for a young John who was a little bit too weebish for his own good. <laughs> to be fair, a lot of people were a little too weebish for their own good. Yeah, high school's a nightmare. Yeah. It's just all it is. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. it's. It's a hellscape of everyone thinking that they're doing something cool, but they're not. There was a lot of Jenkos and a lot of Naruto headbands. Yeah. I think I... I don't think I ever wore a Naruto headband to school. I know you've owned I, them. I've, I have I have owned them. I did have a Hidden Leaf one. I went for Halloween one year as a ghost hunting ninja because I was lazy, so I just put a, a headband on. Okay. That's fair. And I, I had a Taps t shirt at yeah. the time. So, but anywho. So, you know that show's still on the air? 
I do. Grant is running it now. Yeah. Yeah, the other guy disappeared. Is no longer on it, though. The, yeah. the bald guy. I forget his name. I only know that because I recently watched it. There's, I watched it when we went to the Renaissance Fair. That was like one of the five channels that the hotel dude, had. Dude, dude, that's basically what, when I went to, to Canada. Yeah. It was just like oh, one same, of the channels. The it thing? was like yeah. literally the same thing. It was just like, <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, it's you know. this or the news, so this. <laughs> Honestly, actually, that was the same time. Yeah. <laughs> we probably watched the same episode. Right? Yeah. That's probably true. <laughs> you and I probably were just like sitting in our hotel room like just in different oh, countries having the same thoughts watching the same show. <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird. It was strange. I I don't know if the show always felt that way, but man does it feel awkward nowadays. Yeah. Um anywho. Now we haven't really gotten to why Mothman's famous yet. No. Oh, that's true. We haven't even touched on that. Yeah. So, right now, Mothman isn't that different from a Sasquatch or a Dover Demon, um, any of the any of those things where it's just like you know, there's a couple of events and then like you know, it's it's really not even that different from like the Enfield Horror, right? And no one knows about the Enfield Horror. Unless you've been listening to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, well, unless you've been keeping up with this, yeah. Yeah. But, like, like I had never heard of it before I started researching for this podcast, right? It, But there's almost more to the Enfield Horror, like, in terms of things that actually are associated with the Enfield Horror, than Mothman has associated with him. Because in this case, that's pretty much all the noteworthy sightings of the Mothman. Yeah. There were a few cases where, like, some people who had seen him saw him multiple times and... Like, he landed on people's roofs and all that stuff. But, like, I, they're kind of boring stories, right? Because mm-hmm. they're, they're all the same story. Now, the thing that happened, though, was um, Mothman got associated with the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967. Yeah. Now, um, the collapse of the Silver Bridge is, like, a pretty infamous bit of like engineering lore so to speak Mm -hmm. because it it was like a uh what was it high load multiple single failure point bridge yeah so effectively what happened was there was no redundancies built into the bridge um it literally failed because a single eye bore eye bar had one crack like an inch below the surface or something like that Mm -hmm. really small um it was maintained poorly and not only that, but the bridge was not designed for the level of load that it was experiencing that day. So it was like a, a perfect storm of bad things happening. Um, two of which could have been worked around, but, you know, whatever. Unfortunately, 50, 46 people did die when the bridge collapsed. And not only that, it happened, it happened in, uh, I think, December 15th. So 10 days before Christmas. Not great. Yeah, not great. Not great in the very uh, Christian West Virginia. Yeah. Bad, bad year. Bad year for everyone. So, really, the the failure of the bridge itself, far from tragic. Well, not far from tragic. Absolutely tragic. Yeah. But far from mysterious and supernatural is what I meant to say. Um, However, John Keel, in his book, The Mothman Prophecies has made a link between the Mothman, Men in Black, UFOs, and a particularly infamous extraterrestrial, yeah. Indrid Cold, okay. to the collapse of the Silver Bridge. However, I've read the Mothman prophecies. Yeah. He doesn't spell that out directly anywhere in the book. No. <laughs> no. He did, well, he doesn't spell out the connection, the correlation of Mothman anywhere in the book. Yeah. It's implied in the title, though. Okay. Um, and I've listened to, to podcasts on the nature of the psychopomp, as I'm calling him. Yeah. Mothman. Because effectively the idea is Mothman shows up within the year you're dead. It's almost beat for beat the Black Dog of Bungay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, now... I'm not buying into it, though, 
because Keel, one of the originators of this theory, although that being said, um, there was someone else who contributed. I forget his name off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, Gray Barker. Gray Barker. Okay. Who is his own individual. And I've got links in the show notes because they don't really correlate directly to Mothman. It's more men in black stuff. I got but, you. Um, I'll, I'll include them because I think they're hilarious and you should read them. Basically, Gray Barker was fucking with John Keel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I'm not really buying it it's because John coffee. Keel. You running away with my coffee? What? You running away with my coffee? <laughs> coffee, right coffee, 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 coffee. I'm going to play my Switch. Do, do, do. I have, I have coffee, coffee now. Yes. I heard. So, what was I saying? Um, you were saying that it was uh, Gray Barker was uh, really just fucking around with. Yeah. Yeah. So, Keel himself is incredibly paranoid. Like, if you read the book, it comes across clear as day. He has a tenuous grasp of logic yeah. and a penchant for casual racism. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. really bad. Really, really bad. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But, like, I am super duper hesitant to accept his loose, ill-defined link to the, the zeitgeist. Yeah. Like, he's created this thing that's become popular and it's, like, spawned a movie for no good reason. Mm -hmm. So, that being said people do tend to have an affinity towards this iteration of the Mothman entity. Um, and this link is almost entirely the reason why Mothman yeah. is even known today. Because otherwise, he would have just been another Enfield horror. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, Lauren Coleman, who um, I do want to point out, he did actually have a stroke recently. Oh, did he? Okay. September 11th of this year. Yeah. Um, he maintains a Mothman death list. Oh, okay. Yeah, like as in people who he's who's associ been associated with the Mothman story and who have died soon after their association. Although that being said, the last entry does look like it was in two thousand five. <laughs> oh, okay. And the web, the one on his website is now defunct. Mm -hmm. Um, the allegation is there that there may exist a correlation between the Mothman and the deaths of those who have encountered him. Yeah. His rationale, as he says, is I am not saying that there's anything there. I'm only gathering the data. It would not. It would not. It will not be a loss. Ah. <laughs> You're just throwing the tongue out there now. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> um, I'm only that by gathering the data, it will not be lost, and we can begin to ask the right questions. Yes. It sounds like a fucking South Park quote. Like, like one of those. Like, listen, I'm not saying. It's 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 literally. I'm not saying I'm racist, but uh yeah. Right? It's it's I'm not saying there's anything there, but I really think that there's something there is what he's yeah. saying. That's what that line of that's what that line means to me. And I understand his rationale, but it feels very sensationalistic, very cold to like mm -hmm. the fact that people have died. There was like oh like the first forty six entries are literally the people who died in the silver bridge collapse yeah which is kind of shitty not gonna lie um and worst of all it's pseudoscientific yeah it's pre it's pretending to be science by saying that oh there's already a correlation here so i'm gonna track it mm -hmm. as opposed to i have a hypothesis is there a correlation here yeah because not only that one of the first people to have seen the mothman is still was still alive at the time of this list being written Oh, okay. So, and not only that, John Keel was still alive when this list was written. Yeah. He's since, he since passed away, but the point still stands, right? Mm -hmm. People associated with the story are not dead. And not only that, people who are like progenitors of the story are not dead. Yeah. So, I don't know. Now, I'm almost done with this episode. There's only a little bit more. Okay. But before before we get into that, actually, there's a lot more still. There's like three pages of shit. <laughs> uh, I want to do right by the Mothman. Okay. 
So I went directly to the source, as I've mentioned, mm-hmm. The Mothman Prophecies by John Keel. It's 300 pages long, Brandon. Oh, man. Yeah. Roughly. And while it's not the first on the subject, because technically that honor goes to Gray Barker, the Silver Bridge, yeah, who I'm pretty sure was the responsible for all the the like weird paranoia events that were circling John Keel, yeah. but that's a whole other episode. It is the most famous telling, receiving a 2002 movie adaptation, which has a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. I looked it up before the podcast. Not great score. Not a great score. Nope. Uh, that being said, this book, as I've said before, is terrible. Absolutely terrible. And I want to cover that before I tell you what I think Mothman actually is. Now, the book itself reads like a bad high school movie script. Like, not even joking, it starts, it opens with John Keel describing himself as another individual. As like Beelzebub walking through the, the... the Pennsylvania, the, not the Pennsylvania, the West Virginia Hills yeah. looking for a phone, right? And then the next the next scene cuts to him talking to someone else while he has his beard and all that. And he's like, he's like a larger than life character, but he's the view that someone who thinks of themselves as larger than life views yeah. a larger than life person being, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, he's he's viewing himself as bigger than he is. So he paints himself as this like journalist hero who's the only one who's capable of unraveling the mysteries of the universe, and he constantly complains about his contemporary ufologists. Oh, geez. Constantly whines about them and says like, "Oh, they do all the th- other things wrong." And there's like teenagers who have mimeograph forms that they send out to people, you know, asking what planet the the alien was from because <laughs> we all know that they're actually psychic beings that exist in whatever yeah. um and he actually shies himself away from the term ufologist for himself even though that's explicitly what he is yeah um he blames them and the u.s government for why it's so difficult to reach research the paranormal while simultaneously not complaining it's really hard to understand yeah because he he like vacillates between two belief systems and it's like what are you doing dude yeah who are you what are you and not only that he devotes a whole chapter to him thinking that his phone line was tapped and apparently he's receiving calls from two numbers on his line and the second number supposedly is pretending to be a secretary for him (laughs) okay now I don't think that's how cell. I don't think that's how phones work. No, as a rule, because I think if that happened, everything would break down. Yeah, right. Like if that happened, that would be a colossal fa- failure on the part of yeah. everyone involved. And not only that, I don't think you can assign the same number. Like I, I don't think you can assign a number twice to one line. And he was mm-hmm. like complaining about his phone bill being double. Yeah. But usually phone bills are to the number, not to the residents. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, now, additionally, he jumps around case to case, story to story, time to time, randomly. And I half the time, I didn't even know what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, it reached a point where while I was reading the book, I was just skimming because I'm like, this makes no sense. I have no idea why he's talking about this story. Yeah. Because it has no relation to anything about anything in Point Pleasant, Virginia. West Virginia. Um, the book constantly makes claims that things have been solved or assumes incredibly outlandish claims as fact. Like, he said that he the, the whole thing of UFOs has been solved. Like, you know, he's like, oh, this psychic phenomena is just a thing. It happens. There's proof. And he doesn't cite anything. No citations whatsoever on any of that kind of stuff. Um, and even as fiction, it's not good because his vision of reality is insanely unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't even know how to adequately describe how... If you want to experience paranoia, read this book. Oh, God. <laughs> because that's, this book gave me anxiety practically 
because of how <laughs> it was written. Mm-hmm. If if it was meant to do that, then okay, maybe it's a great book. I don't know. But even then, I don't think it's a good book because that's not what it was written for. Now, this doesn't even begin to touch on the casual racism and sexism that oozes from every other line of this book. He described one of the, the witnesses as strikingly attractive. Like, <laughs> one sec. I have, I have it right here. Uh, he actually the, included that? Yes. Yes, he did. And this was one of the people from the first four, like, you know, the married woman. Yeah. He describes her as strikingly attractive. Let me pull up. I sent it to Alyssa the other night. What is it? Mary Mallet, a strikingly attractive brunette, cried from the back seat. <laughs> That's literally a line from the oh, book. Oh, wow. No editing, no nothing. That was a screenshot I took from Kindle. Now, oh, good. And not only that, but he calls he calls the men in black orientals. <laughs> and he uses very uh, racially charged terms for black people. Oh, okay. Constantly. Constantly. Oh. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, dude, you didn't have to say that. You weren't even quoting anyone. Yeah. And this book was written oh, in the wow. 70s, Brandon. Yeah. And I kind of have the feeling that we were starting to get the handle on those types of things. At least a little bit. We weren't perfect. I've listened to the dollop. I know. Yeah. But, like, I don't think that this is a product of the time story. No. I think he's just a, a casual racist. Um, yeah. However, my favorite line in the whole book is near the end because it totally encapsulates the problem I have with Keel himself yeah. and his book. And now keep in mind, the only context that you need to know is this is after he finds out that the Silver Bridge has fallen and 46 people have died. Yeah. 46 people other than him and he's talking to someone, right? Mm-hmm. That's all this person knows. They've done it again, I finally muttered softly. Those lousy bastards have done it again. They knew this was going to happen, and when. They gave me all that bilge about a power failure. They knew. They just didn't want me to be able to warn anyone. That is such a narcissistic view Yeah. on the loss of life of 46 human beings. It wasn't oh, this is terrible, it's, oh, this was, th- they they stopped me from being a hero. Yeah. That's what that indicates. That's not indicating I'm sad that these people died. That's yeah. indicating I'm sad I couldn't be the hero. Mm-hmm. And that is my problem with John Keel and my problem with the Mothman prophecies. Yeah. I know that I just got on a soapbox, but I hated that book. <laughs> and I don't think, I don't know if I got that across properly, but I hated that book. Yeah. And I do, I read that book because I wanted to do right by Mothman and do right by this story. You wanted to do right by Mothman. Okay. And because it's our, it's our year long anniversary episode, I wanted to make sure that I did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and I paid with my sanity. Yeah. Now, Let's uh, let's talk about what I think the Mothman is. While Strike Encrypted, Mothman is a bit too high spec. Yeah. I'm naturally suspicious of a creature which has VTOL capabilities, the ability to strike fear in the hearts of man, and can cause pink eye. Anything that can cause pink eye, I'm a little leery of, just yeah. in general. Um, don't fart so, on a pillow. No, don't fart on pillows. So I be well, as long as you're not, if you're wearing more than two layers of clothes, it's fine. Okay. Mythbusters taught me that. Um, <laughs> so I began poking around my usual skeptic sites. And at this point, I, of course, find an article by the painted state of K- Cryptopedia, Joe Nickel. Because he he's shown up, I think, in more yeah. episodes than anyone else other than maybe Lauren A Cole. lot. I think it might be Joe Nickel, but I only say that because SGU quotes him a lot. And oh, okay. they say Joe Nickel. And I think they know him. Okay, so Joe Nickel. Um... To cut a fairly large article down to a snippet, which I recommend you read it if you're yeah. listening to the podcast and you enjoyed this, and I have it in the show notes. Uh, it was this particular one is let me just read it off. Uh, Mothman revisited investigating on site Joe Nickel. You might need a uh, a skeptics guide um, or a skeptic inquir- skeptical inquirer subscription because mm-hmm. I do have one. So 
because I read these articles so much for this show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think there's also a free version of it available somewhere as well. So you yeah. can try and find that. Um, he believes ultimately that the Mothman of Point Pleasant is a barred owl, a large owl with a strong red eye shine. Should be noted that the owl is endemic to the region and can reach around two feet tall with a wingspan of five feet. Okay. Additionally, there's a hunter who had shot a barred owl, and he's convinced he's convinced that the Mothman sighting stopped after he shot that owl. Yeah. So it could be literally that there was one owl who everyone was misinterpreting because he was so huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, another theory posited at the time, because also keep in mind, this is over the span of a few weeks that yeah. most of the sightings happen. The the um, Silver Bridge incident is a full year after like the last sighting happened. Yeah. So the correlation there is literally all Gray Barker and uh, John Keel mm -hmm. being paranoid. Um, another theory posited, which was posited around the time, 1966 was that Mothman was a misidentified sandhill crane. And I've included a picture of a sandhill crane yeah. for reference. Uh, you'll notice it has two very large spots at the top of its head that are red. It's also gray. And it oh, also yeah. has... It, it's also two and a half feet to five and a half feet tall. Okay. Uh, so it's a fairly large bird. Yeah. And while it's not endemic to the area does have a tendency of something that's known as vagrancy, where it leaves its its traditional paths periodically, like its migratory paths. Yeah. Which is totally possible and totally within the realm of something that could happen. Because also keep in mind, this is only one incident over the span of three weeks mm -hmm. or so, give or take, maybe a month. Yeah. Which is totally within the realm of something that just one migratory bird being lost could cause. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to point out that I do recall someone seeing a heron once and thinking that it was a pterodactyl. Literally. <laughs> do I know this person? Uh, I don't even remember their name. It was one of my sister's friends. Oh, okay. Uh, and they were less than a football field away from the bird in question. Oh, good. So, naturally, there's also the possibility of a misidentified aircraft or other natural phenomena at play. Yeah. Like, there's so many things that the Mothman could be explained by. Proponents of Mothman appear to lean towards the notion that Mothman is some form of alien, John Keel in particular. Um, and he seems to be in the camp of it being some form of dimensional hopper because that's what he believes all aliens are. Yeah. They're like a super advanced form of life that lives on Earth. And mm. it's complicated, confusing, and I don't like the theory because I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I actually think that a alien from another planet is more likely than an alien from another dimension. Uh, yeah, ditto. I would definitely say that. Yeah. Um, while potentially interesting as a concept, literally no evidence of this, nor any evidence of the psychopomp Mothman. Just basic causation. No, basic correlation that doesn't have any form of causation or anything like that. Because remember... Causation does not equate correlation, uh, and correlation doesn't mean that the two things are actually related at all. They could yeah. just have two things happening simultaneously. So, Mothman continues to be cited to today. The most recent batch of sightings was in, it was in 2017, where Mothman was seen in the Chicago area, with around 55 sightings of the creature. However, those sightings have a self-selection bias at play, in that people were reporting them Typically, we're frequently uh, paranormal message boards and things of the sort. Yeah. So, whether or not there were more, whether or not those sightings have any merit, that's a good question because, quite frankly, one, a uh, bunch of people who are predisposed to supernatural claims, and two, there's no footage of the Mothman, despite people having phones on them at all times. Um, additionally, He's been uh, attached to 9-11 and Chernobyl, but those claims are especially tenuous. Yeah, I, I would say that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, in 2016, a man claimed to have taken pictures of the Mothman. However, the photo 
which I've included as local man photographs the Mothman, uh, appears to be a bird carrying the snake. And if you'll click that little link there, Brandon, uh, it's on the pause screen. You can see it's like a... Yeah, well, it's, oh, I'm getting an ad. Oh, uh, yeah. Here. 30 seconds? Who does a 30 second ad anymore? Let me let me post a, a snippet of this the picture. I'm gonna be an old man. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be an old man. There you go. So that's the picture. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's a bird uh, carrying a snake. Yeah, that's definitely a bird carrying a snake. Because if if that was a Mothman, he's got he's got like polio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because his legs are kind of like yeah, uh, like flopping in the wind yeah. a little bit. And for something that's seven feet tall, I don't know if it could maintain its own weight. Um, so, at the time of recording, September 21st, 19, uh, 19, wow, 2019, a yearly festival happens at Point Pleasant, uh, celebrating the local tourist attraction, or rather legend. Yeah. And that's happening right now as we speak. Oh, good. Yes. Uh like literally right now as you speak which is a weird yeah. kind of synchronicity which is funny because uh what's his name john keel dealt explicitly in synchronicity mm -hmm. even though i don't really think that's so much the case as it's just a funny coincidence because we were planning on doing the mothman case forever yeah so um but yeah that's all there is to the mothman brandon okay <laughs> like I don't know. It, it's it's kind of disappointing in a way. Yeah. Well, uh, something I've noticed for like the really big popular cryptids is that there's not a whole lot to them. Um, yeah. They've just gotten, for some reason, very popular. Oh well. Well, actually, I know why the Mothman has gotten popular as well. In addition to the fact that he's associated with like a really tragic event. Yeah. It's a cool design. Oh yeah, no, it is. It is like like Mothman himself is a really cool idea. Yeah, right. Like Sasquatch, cool design. Uh, Jersey Devil, it's a chimera. Chimeras are sweet. Yeah, right. Loch Ness, dinosaurs are awesome. Uh huh. Like those are things that make sense. I get it. Like if a, if a creature looks cool, Enfield Horror kind of looks like he's a he kind of looks like he's a, a two legged creep with a, a a particularly large third appendage. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. It's not as not as interesting to look at. Yeah. Well, depending on who the person is, I guess. <laughs> but like you know, it's it's all about the uh, the what's what's it called the um, impression management, so yeah. to speak, of the cryptid. Yeah. And like it or not, Mothman has good impression management. Yeah. It's that's just the fact of the matter. And it's a story that you can say like, oh, legend has it that there was a moth that a um, um, giant man sized moth who terrorized a town for a year and eventually a bridge collapsed. And it's believed that that moth man was responsible for it. Also, aliens might have just damaged the bridge. And yeah. also, maybe there's some association with John, Pope John Paul and other things because John Keel is a paranoid man. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty much the story of Cryptopedia, though. Every, yeah. every monster we cover, the number one deciding factor of whether or not people know about it is how cool it looks. Yes. Like, overwhelmingly. Yeah. So, now... It's been a year, Cryptopedia. Yes. So, wanted to do a few things first. One, wanted to thank everyone who's been listening. Oh, yeah. Thank everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except that one guy. You know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. Um, it's been a pretty crazy year overall. Um, right now, at the time of recording, we're at... Uh, we are at... Let me see. 8.3 thousand listens all time. Oh, nice. That's that's a that's way more <clears> than I was expecting. Well, I'm round. Yeah. I'm high rounding up. I'm rounding yeah. from well, below the five. When this podcast comes out, we'll probably we'll probably be up to. Well, by the end of this month, we'll be up to about 
eight point eight. I'd say. Okay. Yeah. That are based fine. on our. When based it drops, on our, then I'll, I'll round up to nine thousand downloads. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're pretty close, right? Yeah. Um, we're getting around like one hundred twenty downloads an episode. It's pretty sweet. Um, surprisingly, I gotta say, uh, recently Wisconsin has been our biggest listener. What's up, Wisconsin? That's weird. Yeah. What's up, Wisconsin? Man, you cheeseheads. Um, but our top three so far have been New York, California, and Texas. Um, so thanks. Uh, and if you're not in those states, thanks still. Um, although that being said, this month, Wisconsin, you're absolutely thrashing it. You're at 89 downloads in New York. Our closest, our closest in New York is 63. So you're totally thrashing it. I don't know what's going on. Um, but I, I think we had a pretty surprisingly good year is what I'm going to say. I'm surprised we made it a year. I am legitimately surprised we made it a year. Um, also, our most popular crypt. Or, okay, so I'm looking at our top ten episodes, and I'm okay. cutting out uh, the first three because that's probably overinflated because people are listening to the like trying the episode out, the show yeah. out. Our number one episode is Reverse Batman. Reverse Batman. Okay, so that's the Man Bat. <laughs> yeah, and it's followed by the Yowie. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess you guys like humanoids yeah I um, guess. oh god man bat wait man bat which one was man bat man bat was um uh i have to consult the spreadsheet because we had a couple things that were badish and manish um, yeah, it's not we bat had... squ- was that the bad squad no that's not bad squad that's um, not bad squad that wasn't the ass one was it it might have been no, because the Aswang was its own episode, wasn't it? Oh yeah, there was its whole own episode. Man, we had a lot of bat, bat stuff. We did a lot of episodes about bats or guys. things that could come off as yeah, batty. We did a lot of batty episodes. Yeah, it was, it was a weird time. Oh yeah, we went through a phase. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but so I do have to say this podcast. While fun, can be a little exhausting. Oh yeah, it's a lot of work. Man bat was it, just straight up man bat, by the way. Yeah, I, I, why don't I remember him? I don't know. That was only episode uh, forty three. <laughs> so weird. That's so recent too. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of hits on the whole point that I'm trying to make. Um, Brandon and I have been doing this for a year. We our recording schedule is literally every two weeks we do an episode. And then release it. Um, that's when we're writing 10 pages an episode, that's a lot of work. And I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, but I am complaining. I am slightly <laughs> complaining. complaining. You're like, man, this is difficult. <laughs> it is difficult. Um, as a result, personally, I feel like my quality level has dropped in the past year. Um, and that's largely because, like, you know, it's hard to find something every week. Oh, it's hard to like find yeah. something where one, because of the schedule, you're like, all right, there's enough here where I think given the timeline, I'll be able to get enough sources to put something together and then try to organize it where it's kind of maybe makes sense when you write it all yeah. up. Yeah. The, the only reason I was able to do the Mothman episode was I literally had a month of lead time on it. Yeah. If I didn't have that month of lead, we would not be doing a Mothman episode today. So... Because of that, Brandon and I have been talking, and we're deciding to go on an other other week schedule. Uh, so starting the next episode, we're going to take a week off. Like So basically, this episode's releasing. Week off. Next week, we're going to release the next episode. I believe. Yeah. Correct no, me if no, I'm that wrong. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so it'll be like an every other week release, which will give us additional yeah. time to do research and also just yeah. not go crazy all the time trying to find stuff. Exactly. And it, it, then we can enjoy it. We can like I recording the podcast. One of my favorite things to do. Researching the podcast. Least Reddit. favorite thing. <laughs> least worth. Love making it. Hate. Hate. I, <laughs> hate I hate researching stuff. it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so 
basically what that means is we're going to our next episode is going to drop on the 7th of October. Um and then the next episode after that will be the 21st and so on and so forth. Um hopefully what this means is we'll be able to make more interesting content for you. We'll be able to do bigger cryptids cuz keep in mind we still haven't done a full episode on Sasquatch. Oh yeah. And we've yeah. done 52 of these things. There's a lot of so, big ones we haven't touched on. We haven't done we haven't done Sasquatch. We haven't done the Jersey Devil. We haven't done the Loch Ness Monster. We haven't done the Skunk Ape. We haven't done the Loop Guru. That's just five that come off of, come out off the top of my head of things that I've been wanting to do since we started this podcast, but just literally haven't had the time to do them. Yeah. And like Moko Membe, I'm coming for you. Oh, I want you to do Moko Moko Membe because uh, that's gonna be hilarious for me to watch. Yes, that that one's that one's gonna be a rough one for me. Yeah, but I can. I'm gonna tell. do it. I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna go slightly insane, but I'll yeah. do it. It's gonna be John Yells 2.0. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Fair. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, if you're a patron, uh, I know that we're gonna be producing less content, so I can understand if you want to like reduce your me- your membership or leave or whatever. If you want to talk to us, talk to us. We'll figure something out. Um, I don't think we're going to change anything how we're doing it because I think we're still going to do try to go for a bonus episode a month um, or two. Hopefully, actually, one of the main benefits of this is I might actually have time to work on the SCP episodes again. That would be awesome. <laughs> it's, it's so difficult. It got to the point, like, I don't know. Like, I know I banked some, like, bonus stuff. Yeah. But, like, every once in a while, I'll, like, make a list and try to bang out three or four just so I don't have to worry about <laughs> doing it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It is. So I know this sounds like we're complaining, but nah. we we care about you guys, our listeners. We want to give you the best possible uh, show we can, and I think that this is going to be the best possible way we can give you a show. And not only that, I think it's going to be the best for both of our mental health, <laughs> which I think is the most important thing. Also, I want to work on my D and D campaign that I want to run again. Yeah. So, and I can't do that with this current schedule. Yeah. That's fair. Um, That's absolutely fair. Yeah. I want, so that, I want to start being able to play guitar again. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little lighter. But I think overall it's going to be better. So, yeah. without further ado, let me do the normal plugs. If you enjoy the podcast, you can follow us on CryptopediaCast.com, Instagram at CryptopediaCast, Twitter also at CryptopediaCast. Um, if you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, as I mentioned before. Uh, our Jackalope level patrons get shout outs. And Brandon, if you would be so kind as to give them our year anniversary shout out oh yeah one year anniversary thank you to clay sinclair and also marty von party uh yeah there's cool cool dudes the surprising all of our patrons have been supporting us for a surprisingly long time as well uh yeah they've been in it for a minute like yeah yeah our our um our income from the patreon actually paid for hosting for the website yeah which is fantastic just to have something that like it, so, it like is its own thing like there's yeah. no losses in, like we'd be doing it even if there were losses involved but like this is cool we, that it yeah. sustains like that that's i think that's the thing that's that's keeping us going the easiest to keep us going is we're literally neutral so yeah. it's literally just a hobby yeah which is perfect <laughs> so um if you enjoyed the show be sure to rate, review, subscribe, share it with friends. That's probably the biggest one, to be totally honest, because I'm pretty suspicious of the whole rate, review, and subscribe thing. I don't think it actually does as much as people say it does, but whatever. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them. Keep in mind, this coming year, we're going to be doing, what is that, uh, 26 total episodes? Yeah. So, or give or take, because we might have to take it by episode or something like that, because life happens. Um that's 26 potential monsters we're doing. Uh, so if you got something good, send it to us. Cause we're also going to be doing hopefully some of the bigger ones. Yes. Um, yeah. so yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Now it's my turn, isn't it? You'd yeah, think it's your after turn. a year I'd figure out how this whole outro thing works. Eventually we'll get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could find me it. on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Capital C, capital B. As always, if you want to follow me, I'm at mu2057. On Instagram, I almost said cryptogram. Oh, we should make that. New app. CCC, That's CCC, expensive. CCC registered. Copyright, copyright. I think it exists already. Oh. I can almost, I can guarantee it exists already because cryptogram is like a, an encoded message. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird, and they have been weird for at least a year. Mm-hmm.